for being here. I appreciate your interest in this video and I hope that I will be able to achieve what I'm trying to do here. Basically, I wanna put out some recipe cards. Recipe cards for fertilizers, for large, medium and small orchids, pHing values for organic or inorganic growing and using the different seasons as a reference. I am hoping that someone will find this useful and be able to screenshot their recipe cards and use it in their own collection, much like our previous generations did with recipe cards for the kitchen <laughs> and cooking. None of these products I am showing today am I affiliated with in no way, shape or form. And I'm also gonna put a disclaimer out there. This is the first year I'm using Rain Mix. I have been using MSU fertilizer for the past years, but I'm switching to Rain Mix simply because it was given to me and I've always, always wanted to use it. None of the products I'm showing you today are the make all break all of fertilizer or supplements. And I also want to qualify something that on my channel, I make a clear distinction between fertilizers and supplements, not just how I talk about them, but also how I apply them. I keep them separate. I never mix my nutrient solution, mixing supplements into my fertilizer. There is one exception of a supplement that is mixed for me already, and we'll get to that when we get to the supplement recipe cards. So how you will see the recipe cards are exactly what I do. You see, the fertilizers, in my opinion, are as an analogy, what we consider the meals as humans. And then we take vitamin supplements, but they don't replace our meals. The same, in my opinion, has to be said for the orchid hobby. The fertilizer is the main staple diet, and then we have supplements that are separate. For me, it is safer and much, much easier, and the recipe cards should reflect that and make any application safe and easy for you to copy and follow, or even tweak to your liking, to your preference, to your environment. Another point of reference when it comes to these recipe cards is orchids in active growth. That is when these recipe cards apply. An orchid that's not doing anything, no fertilizer. Water, yes, no fertilizer. So let's get into the recipe card for winter. Fertilizing, large orchids, 160 parts per million, medium orchids, 100 parts per million, and small orchids, 50 parts per million, pH at 6.5 for inorganic growing and 6.7 for organic growing. In spring, large orchids, 200 parts per million, medium orchids, 130 parts per million, small orchids, 70 parts per million and the small orchids include seedlings. The fertilizer should be pH'd at 6.5 in inorganic media and 6.7 in organic media. The recipe for summer, large orchids, 300 parts per million, medium orchids, 200 parts per million, small orchids, 100 parts per million. pH for inorganic growing at 6.3 and for organic growing at 6.5. And in fall, large orchids, 300 parts per million, medium-sized orchids, 200 parts per million, small orchids, 100 parts per million. pH at 6.3 for inorganic growing and 6.5 for organic growing. Moving on to the recipes for supplements. I will be referring to the months of spring through fall as April through October. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, reverse that. Epsom salts once a month, 100 parts per million at 6.5 for inorganic growing and 6.7 for organic growing, using the soak method at 30 minutes as a minimum. I consider the soak method of applying anything the blitz absorption, so the pH should be for that immediate absorption of the element. Calcium nitrate, spring through fall. April through October. Switch that around once again if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Once a month, 100 parts per million at 6.5 pH for inorganic media and 6.7 for organic media. Spring through fall. This is the exception of supplements that are mixed together, but they have already been mixed for me. The CalMag is mixed and the seaweed does not interfere with the CalMag functions. Two times a month, 60 parts per million of calcium magnesium and 40 parts per million of seaweed, totaling 100 parts per million. Inorganic growing 6.5 pH, organic growing 6.7. 
and I do this as a regular watering, in my case, filling the reservoir, replacing the fertilizer two times a month. So now maybe when you saw the Epsom salts at 100 parts per million, you thought, well, that's a bit conservative. All my numbers are conservative. I prefer to err on the side of caution when it comes to salt buildup in my pots. But when you saw 100 parts per million for Epsom salts, the magnesium application that I do once a month exclusively as a soak, and now you see that two times a month I add CalMag into the pot, there's already more magnesium coming in, and my fertilizer also has magnesium. So this is why the recipes are so conservative, because sometimes our supplements doing what they are doing, as in supplementing, will supplement what is already in the fertilizer. Spring through fall, in my case, April through October. I do a once monthly silicon application at 100 parts per million, pHing at 6.5 for inorganic media and 6.7 for organic media. And I use the soak method, blitz absorption. And then I use seaweed only three times a week as a foliar spray application only. And I use that at a concentration of 40 parts per million at 6.5 pH. Now, I have to be very, very cautious with what I say here, because if you are in a controlled environment, foliar spraying may raise alarm bells and rightly so. New growths are coming, crowns would be wet. So no matter whether you use seaweed or any kind of other foliar fertilizing, ensure adequate airflow. I am lucky that I can grow in my climate outdoors for 80% of the year and I have extremely low humidity. So I go around with my sprayer a lot. In order to do something valuable while I'm doing all that, I add 40 parts per million of seaweed into the spray bottle three times a week because, you know, might as well while we're at it. And in order for nothing to interfere with the nutrients that I'm trying to get into my orchids, I use a synthetic pH down and I use silicon as a pH up. If I was too heavy handed on the pH down, a few drops, depending on the value of the pH I come out with, if I was too heavy handed, a drop or two of silicon will raise my pH. And then there is a minute, minute trace of silicon in the solution as well, but that is so irrelevant. I just prefer to use synthetic pH up or down for safety purposes. I really can't do anything wrong in doing so. And because I make large batches, it is worth my while. For small collections, a few drops of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice will do the trick of pH down as well. But I'm talking small collections, maybe 20 orchids or less. When it comes to large batches of nutrient solution, supplement solutions, there would be way too much potassium in my solution if I used lemon as a pH down. So to be on the safe side, I go with the synthetic. All the recipe cards are there for orientation purposes only. What I want to achieve with this video is to make it simple, break it down, tweakable as per necessity because some people like nutmeg and other people prefer allspice in their cookies and cakes. But the basic recipe is there and then it is easily tweaked based on personal preferences. Now, I am very, very well aware of how sensitive the subject of fertilizing is to every grower. I am not imposing my method or what I do on anybody. I just want to break it down, have screenshot available little recipe cards as a foundation for everybody who needs them. I have a playlist of my products where I deep dive into each and every one of them with a little bit more detail. Doesn't mean that you can't ask your questions in the comments. But I really, really hope that the intention of this video was to keep it simple, easy to follow, and to build confidence in anybody that feels overwhelmed when it comes to the subject matter. That is the aim of this video, and I really, really hope that I achieved that. Your time was very much appreciated. Your feedback is also always appreciated. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe because I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.